Our next presentation is uh, in vitro anti arachidonate 5 lipoxygenase, anti hyaluronidase, and antioxidant activities of bark of Flacurita indica, HD SM Pereira, and R. Samrasekar. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am here today to present my study titled In Vitro Anti Arachidonate 5 Lipoxygenase, Anti Hyaluronidase, and Antioxidant Activities of Bark of Flacotia indica. We'll brief you my contents under these categories. Uh, moving on to the introduction, actually, before I uh, start about the uh, about talking about my assays, I should uh, say about something about inflammation. Actually, inflammation is uh, one of the most complex pathophysiological uh, process that we can see. So we can simply introduce it as the foundation of so many diseases and disorders. According to the statistics in the United States of America, actually there is an increase in prevalence of an inflammatory mediated diseases. Therefore, researchers are looking for more and more new treatment approaches to treat inflammatory mediated diseases. So in talking about the new approaches about treating inflammatory diseases, uh, enzymes have a major role because there are so many important enzymes which are actively involving in the uh, mediation of inflammation. Out of those enzymes, arachidonate 5-lipoxygenase and hyaluronidase enzymes are two major enzymes and it has been recognized uh, the inhibition of the catalytic functions of these two enzymes uh, has been identified as a promising therapeutic approach in the treatment of inflammatory diseases. Talking about the 5-lipoxygenase enzyme, it belongs to the family of lipoxygenase and it catalyzes the reaction which produces one of the potent inflammatory mediators uh, called leukotrienes. So why these leukotrienes are very much interested? There are so many undesired properties uh, given by these uh, leukotrienes. So in order to manage, uh, in order to control these undesired properties, our focus should go to leukotrienes and the target is inhibition of the lipoxygenase assay enzyme. And unfortunately, there is only one uh, licensed uh, 5 lipoxygenase enzyme inhibitor which is used in, uh, for asthma. And um, there are so many reported phytoconstituents like flavonoids and polyphenolics, which are claimed to have uh, 5 lipoxygenase inhibitory properties. Therefore, the uh, searching for new 5 lipoxygenase inhibi inhibitors has become a, uh, an intense subject in this uh, journey of searching novel anti allergic and anti inflammatory drugs. Talking about the second enzyme, it's hyaluronidase enzyme. Actually, this enzyme has a different mode of action uh, uh, compared to the lipoxygenase, and uh, it's a mucopolysaccharide hydrolyzing enzyme. Upon in vivo activation of this enzyme, it can uh, degranulate the mast cells, thereby release the inflammatory mediators and impart inflammation. On the other hand, it can hydrolyze the substance called hyaluronate, which is uh, abundantly present in the synovial fluid. Uh, and it's uh, in, uh, in our joints, functions as a viscal lubricating agent, uh, and it, can, it uh, gives rise to so many pathophysiological conditions, including inflammation. Therefore, the in, uh, importance of hyaluronidase enzyme inhibitors come into the view. Uh, actually, there are already uh, known uh, hyaluronidase enzyme inhibitors in broad, and out of those inhibitors, plant-derived bioactive components take a uh, major place. Uh, they, and they have been identified as new potent anti-inflammatory drugs. When talking about inflammation, we can't simply forget about antioxidants. Why? Antioxidants are the substances which can scavenge free, free radicals. And there is a strong relationship between free radicals and inflammation. And uh, it's reported screening for antioxidant potential can reveal many important information about anti-inflammatory properties of a drug candidate. And uh, still, uh, the plant kingdom remains as a major source of potent, unexplored bioactive constituents. Flacotia indica is the plant in interested in this study. Uh, actually, this, is, this belongs to the family of Flacotiaceae, and in single, it's called Uguresa. 
Actually, almost all parts of the plant has been used in the traditional system of medicine for so many disease conditions, and so many important biological, pharmacological properties have been reported with some important chemical constituents. Actually, why this plant is interested? Because uh, there are only few studies conducted on this uh, plant, uh, especially on anti, uh, in vitro anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activities. And in the phytopharmacological review, the author introduces this plant as the most useful traditional medicinal plant in India. And it emphasizes the uh, need of further uh, bioactivity studies of these plant extracts. And uh, this, is, this is going to be the first report of the in vitro 5-lipoxygenase hyaluronidase enzyme inhibitory and antioxidant properties of the bark extract of this plant. Therefore, considering all these facts, uh, my objective is to investigate the in vitro anti-arachidonate 5-lipoxygenase, anti-hyaluronidase, and antioxidant activities of ethanol bark extract of Lacotia indica. Actually, the ethanol est extract was prepared using cold extraction technique. 5-lipoxygenase enzyme inhibitory assay was conducted using a microplate-based kinetic method. Uh, using the linoleic acid as the substrate and bicalin was used as the reference standard. And in the hyaluronidase enzyme inhibitory assay was conducted. Uh, it was also using a microtiter uh, plate based method, but it's, it's an endpoint method using the sodium hyaluronate as the substrate. And tannic acid was used as the reference standard. Talking about the antioxidant activity, actually we have used four different antioxidant assays based on four different mechanisms to assess the antioxidant potential. All these uh, assays are based on uh, microtiter plate methods and at the same time total polyphenolic and flavonoid contents were also determined. In the DPPH free radical scavenging assay, Trolox was used as the reference standard, and by this assay we evaluated the uh, hydrogen donating ability of the extract. In the FRAP assay, uh, Trolloc standard curve used, was used to express the results, and by this assay, we assess the electron transability of the extract. In ferrous cyan chelating assay, the metal chelating ability was tested, and sodium uh, EDTA was used as the reference standard. And oxygen radical absorbance capacity assay, one of the, this is the most compatible in, in, in vitro antioxidant assay with human physiology because it involves the, in, it involves with the peroxyl radical scavenging. Uh, again, the Trolloc standard curve was used to uh, express the results. And this is the principle behind the RAC assay. It's based on fluorescence method. And uh, total polyphenolic content was uh, determined using folin c uh, method. Total flavonoid content was determined using uh, aluminum trichloride method. And uh, statistical analysis of the data was done by using the soft SPSS 22. Uh, I see 50 values were calculated using linear regression analysis. Moving on to the research and discussion part, in uh, lipoxygenase enzyme inhibitory assay, actually the extract was tested at five different assay concentrations. At each concentration, uh, it showed a significant inhibition compared to control, and at each concentration, they are, the inhibitions were significantly different from each other. In high lipoxygenase enzyme assay, and the IC50 value recorded for extract uh, was 22.75, while that of bicalin was 1.55. In hyaluronidase enzyme inhibitory assay, uh, the extract showed a percentage inhibition of 36.67, while that of tannic acid was close to 100%. Uh, the deep antioxidant activity results at a glance uh, it showed good DPPH, oxygen radical absorbance capacity with the high toly total polyphenolic content. So uh, when we discussed the results, actually the extract had shown good dose-dependent antilipoxygenase activity with moderate hyaluronic acid enzyme inhibitory activity, and in antioxidant activity also high dose-dependent radical scavenging activity uh, with promising oxygen radical absorbance capacity. Actually the reported compounds for these extracts uh, uh, may be contributed for these uh, promising bioactivities. 
and I can conclude this extract can be considered as a good source of uh, five lipoxygenase and hyaluronic acid enzyme inhibitors, and it is further supported by the high antioxidant activity. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we can uh, introduce this extract to do a formulation uh, uh, to make plant-based drugs, maybe for the management of envenomation, maybe some forms of uh, joint diseases such as osteoarthritis, and maybe for allergic conditions. And interest Interestingly, uh, as a cosmeceutical as well, because this hyaluron dase enzyme inhibitory activity is directly related to skin anti-aging properties. So, uh, considering all these uh, high activities, we can this. I think we, this plant should be subjected to more advanced research in the field of herbal medicine, and further studies are being carried out. So, I would like to acknowledge National Research Council for financial support. Thank you very much for your patience. Paper is now open for discussion. Uh, right. Uh, your study uh, used uh, an N value of three. Do you think it is adequate? Uh, according to the published data, they have used uh, three uh, in S3, so I think it's adequate. No, it is not. Sorry? It is not. Uh, because these statistical comparisons uh, which you, you used are based on and, uh, the comparisons of variance. Mm -hmm. right? You cannot uh, estimate the degree of dispersion of the data around the mean by just three data, by just three data, and you further go in making uh, statistical analysis and uh, make conclusions on that. Haven't you received any uh, comments on this regard from the reviewers of this symposium when you initially submit uh, this uh, text for the symposium? Have you received any similar no. comments? No. I think you have. No, you have not. totally disregarded those comments. No, I did get In that. science, we don't have a freedom. We have to play by rules. Thank you. Yeah, to add what uh, uh, Dr. Gunavirikama said, like what they have calculated is IC50, yeah. right? So uh, there are two ways, uh, actually, three-point IC50 or five-point IC50. So it would have been better if you could do five-point IC50 when you do IC50, especially for research purposes. And my uh, small question, again, on the concentrations, you have used, I think, five or six different concentrations. Now, to decide on this concentration, uh, what, what, what did you do really? How did you decide on the concentrations that you have used? Actually, we uh, initially screened at uh, selected concentrations uh, with, the, with a particular set uh, range. Then uh, thereafter, based on those uh, results given for particular those concentrations, we determined the IC50 value. That means we initially screened at three uh, major concentrations, 10 microgram per ml, 100 microgram per ml, and 500 gram microgram per ml. And we categorized data uh, as a high activity, moderate activity, and low activity, uh, within, uh, which lies within those ranges. And uh, when uh, we, the extracts we showed the high activities at lower concentrations, uh, we then selected to uh, calculate the IC50 value. Any other questions? Sorry, sir. Yes, uh, we are planning, sir. There are uh, four more assays to be established. Cyclooxygenase inhibitory activity, nitric oxide scavenging activity based on cell-based uh, cell assay, and uh, anti-denaturation assays are to be established. Yeah, okay. So, thank you very much. Thanks.